normally, um, and it's nice to have something that is continues to be the normal experience as opposed to you know everything changing. Vermont Security President Jesse Harper says his technology captures a more accurate temperature reading compared to handheld and oral devices. Principal Dellinger Pate says only seven percent of students will be completely online. That's about 50 people out of 750, which Superintendent Brian Olkowski says makes a system like this very necessary. Here in Vermont, uh, when ch children get up, you don't want to have a backlog of folks with someone checking their temperature manually for such a large school. One parent told me she feels very comfortable sending her son back to school. He, he misses the community here a lot. Um, he's ready to come back. He's ready to start high school in the building. But her son isn't the only one going back. Sue Anya Bene is a teacher in the district and has missed her 7th and 8th grade students. I'm really excited just to see the kids. Um, remote learning, it was hard seeing them on a screen. Um, I'm excited to see them in person. For students in dozens of schools from New York, Vermont and New Hampshire, they'll be doing a hybrid approach of both in person and online. But that could lead to issues in areas where broadband is weak or doesn't exist. The pandemic has, um, you know, spotlighted how important it is for all communities um, to have access to internet and we know up here in the Northeast Kingdom our region is falling behind. Catherine Sims is the director of the Northeast Kingdom Collaborative and she's been working with schools to increase connectivity. She and her staff helped add Wi-Fi hotspots to public buildings allowing more residents to access high-speed internet without a password. This school year is unlike any before it but community leaders across the country are determined to provide an extra layer of protection and support. Jolie Sherman, Local 22 News. All right, Jolie, thank you very much. Vermont schools are preparing to reopen next Tuesday, and in Burlington, officials took questions from the community at a town hall meeting. The mayor and superintendent, Tom Flanagan, were joined by pediatric infectious disease specialist, Dr. William Raska, who opened his remarks with an attempt to reassure concerned parents. If there's any take home message from anything I say, I want everyone who's listening to that to this, this, this discussion tonight to remember that the prevalence rate in Vermont is much lower than almost anywhere else in the United States. Everyone is barraged every day, but the numbers across the United States, rising rates here and there, astronomical surges here and there, particularly in the Sun Belt, that is not Vermont. He also noted school-based studies have shown children infrequently spread COVID-19 to other students or adults and said kids are also less efficient at transmitting the virus. There's also been some optimism over the fact that Vermont didn't see any outbreaks when child care centers reopened. Vermont educators are hoping Congress can help them out financially to safely reopen schools. Congressman Peter Welch testified before the House Education Committee Wednesday, giving lawmakers an update on the HEROES Act and how it could benefit Vermont. Welch says it would provide over $3 billion to the state. The money could be used for a variety of needs, including to provide safety, equipment, and improving broadband, which Welch says is a vital thing for schools and health care. The HEROES Act passed the House last May, but the Senate has yet to vote. Welch says he's discouraged, but he isn't giving up. Because I know that you're among the pressures that you face is how to help your schools uh, that each of you cherish. Well, we've got to get some help so they can upgrade those schools. Will we get uh, the HEROES Act or some version of it passed? Uh, I'm discouraged about it right now. You know, the House passed it 100 days ago. And the provisions that are in it, they're expensive. The HEROES Act would provide a $1,200 stimulus check to each household member up to $6,000. It would also provide $600 a week in unemployment benefits. A mask mandate has been put in place for youth and adult recreational league sports in Vermont. This all according to the latest guidelines from the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Many sports like soccer and lacrosse were not held to a mask mandate when the ACCD released their initial recreational sports restart guidance back in June. The state guidelines for middle and high school fall sports also say teams need face coverings for practice and games. The mandate will take place September 8th, which is the same day schools across the state are to open. 
For your latest coronavirus headlines and stories that matter to you and your family, head over to MyChamplainValley.com. Good morning, all you cool cats and kittens. You already know what we're talking about. Carol Baskin from the Netflix docuseries Tiger King will be competing in the new season of Dancing with the Stars. The animal activist was one of the many stars revealed Wednesday on Good Morning America. Here are the others. Grammy award-winning rapper Nelly, Backstreet Boys singer AJ McLean, the former Catfish TV host Neve Shulman, and Olympic figure skater and on-air commentator Johnny Weir. Also new this coming season, Tyra Banks will be taking over as host of the show. Exciting stuff coming. Yeah. For sure. I like, um, you know, I don't know how I feel about Carol Baskin, but I'm excited for the others. I really... <laughs> I'm going to tune in to see how she does. Definitely. I bet she won't make it very far. I feel like people kind of in general are like very... They're not a fan um, of her, I don't no, think. No, no, not so much. I know one person that won't be voting for her, Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic, oh, exactly. No and I fully expect and kind of can't wait to see the leopard print outfit. Yeah, right? Right? Definitely. I feel like that's her, that's her thing. They that's have her to thing. do it. Or tiger print, I should say. Yeah. Anyways. All right, out there for this morning, we are waking up to some fog, especially in our river valleys. Typical. You know, you can look at the webcam in the Northeast Kingdom, and 90% of the time during the fall months, you're going to wake up to a little bit of fog. Yeah, pretty, pretty good bet of it, and that's exactly what we're seeing this morning. Heading out the door, it's 57 degrees. On the cooler side, not too bad. Dew point of 56. And it's mild in other locations. Visibility an issue from St. J down to Lebanon, Springfield, the classic River Valley fog. So we saw a little bit of rain last night to help to get some of that fog billowing up. Temp 61 degrees in Burlington, 59 in Montpelier. Not a bad start to the day. 62 in Rutland and 62 in Springfield. And your garden forecast, we are looking at temperatures climbing into the 70s today and low 80s. By 8 o'clock, we're at 64 degrees. 73 degrees clearing out the fog by noon and then we're up into the upper 70s to low 80s for the afternoon. Coming up my full forecast we are tracking out the weekend weather for Labor Day quite for much of it but changes are coming for the actual holiday Labor Day details after the break. And Joe and Jill Biden will visit will be visiting Kenosha Wisconsin today several days after the shooting of Jacob Blake we will have the details ahead local news that matters on local 22 news toyota annual clearance is now in its labor day final countdown hurry in by september 8th before the clearance is over time to get them time to get them don't want to miss a thing get a labor day tacoma no cost maintenance lease for only $1.99 a month that includes toyota safety sense technology or get zero for 60 clearance financing on nine popular 2020 toyota models hurry the clearance ends september 8th don't want to miss a thing toyota let's go places hi i'm joe from vermont coin and jewelry if you're thinking about selling but want to know what your jewelry coins silver watches or precious metals are worth now is the time to go to vermont coin and jewelry here we can answer all of your questions and let you know the true value of your items whether a small broken chain or an estate inheritance we'll provide you with a free no obligation evaluation and if you decide to sell we'll pay you on the spot and you'll always feel comfortable knowing you're getting the highest prices visit us today you'll be glad you did when unexpected home projects come along, use the Home Advisor app and instantly book an appointment online with a top rated pro. Be prepared for whatever home projects come your way. Download the free Home Advisor app today. The weekend starts now. The redesigned three row GMC Acadia. Now everyone can get GM employee pricing on most 2020 GMC SUV models. Current eligible lessees use it to get this low mileage lease on this Acadia SLE for around $219 per month. We are professional grade GMC. Tonight, it's the last episode before the season finale championship. Oh, that was a collision! And the most intense competition yet. Oh, we got a cliffhanger! Ah! New Holy Moly 2, the sequel, tonight on ABC. This morning's weather is sponsored by Northfield Savings Bank. Your Sky Tracker forecast with meteorologist Haley Boulay. 
Good morning, everybody. 613, waking up to a beautiful scene. As you look over the Champlain Valley toward the Adirondacks, the moon, I just saw it a second ago. It must be behind the clouds somewhere, but the moon was up. It was bright this morning early on. Now the sun is up. Sunrise officially at 617 this morning. And currently we're looking at temperatures in the 60s and 50s. 61 for Burlington, 58 in Montpelier, 54 in Saranac Lake, 54 in Saranac Lake and Messina as well. 62 in Rutland and 62 for Lebanon. Two points starting to creep down. Burlington was at 62 when we first started off early this morning. Now we're down to 59. That cooler and drier air is slowly filtering in. And today we are going to see another push of some fronts. It's going to push through and bring us some quieter weather. Get rid of the heat that we're seeing, although it's not terribly hot, but yesterday was just humid. Today, not so much. We are looking at those dew points falling, morning fog out there, and we are settling into a quiet and sunny stretch with 70s all across the board for the seven day forecast. Today, though, we are quiet. A little area of high pressure kind of nosed its way in, bringing us some clear skies. But as we go overnight, we're going to track out this front there. That's going to push through and bring us a few more clouds and maybe a chance for a spot sprinkle, but also help to drain the heat out of our region, bringing in some cooler and drier air once again a second reinforcing shot of it bring our temps back to average if not below average so today partly to mostly sunny after we clear out the fog you may notice a few more clouds as you head past noon as we have a little disturbance well off the coast the cloud cover with it kind of sneaking especially in southern and eastern zones this afternoon temperatures are in the low 80s while dew points are comfortable into the 50s so very calm comfortable winds are light out of the south at anywhere between 5 to 10 and overnight we're clear to start off the evening but clouds will thicken up and there's that frontal boundary there so places in the north country franklin county st lawrence county you may see a spot shower or sprinkle overnight but look at how it washes itself out barely even reaching the champlain valley maybe a few areas of drizzle but again that's at two, three o'clock in the morning. We're dry by the time we reach sun sunrise. Temperatures into the upper 50s overnight. And then Friday, we're mostly sunny. Beautiful weather ahead and temperatures climbing into the mid 60s. Now, seven day forecast, low 70s for Saturday and Sunday. Beautiful weather for the Labor Day weekend forecast. You just have a few more clouds and some unsettled weather for Monday to deal with on Labor Day. Eventually, to check the forecast, want to check out the forecast at any time by ChamplainValley.com. Click on the weather tab. All right, thank you, Haley. It's 616. Thanks for joining us. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are asking states to start preparations to distribute a potential coronavirus vaccine as early as late October. The CDC is offering plans on how to distribute a vaccine and who should get it first. Healthcare and essential workers, long-term care facility residents, and national security populations all at the top of the list. This does not mean the CDC thinks a vaccine will be approved in less than two months. In fact, the organization's director says he thinks that will happen by the end of the year. The U.S. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy has two weeks to respond to a subpoena from the House Oversight Committee. He testified before that committee last week. Its chair, New York Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, gave him a deadline of last Wednesday to turn over documents for its investigation of widespread mail delays across the country. Maloney says DeJoy missed the deadline. The U.S. Postal Service has responded in part, We fully intend to comply with our obligations under the law. Two days after President Trump visited Kenosha, De Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden and his wife will visit the Wisconsin city where the police shooting of Jacob Blake reignited protests over racial injustice. Melissa Rainey has details on what's ahead. Citing overwhelming requests from Democratic leaders, Joe Biden and his wife Jill will head to Kenosha, Wisconsin Thursday. There's been uh, overwhelming requests that I do come. Uh, because uh, what we want to do is we got to heal. We got to put things together, bring people together. Biden's visit comes on the heels of President Trump's earlier this week. Trump's visit drew criticism after he ignored local leaders who asked he not come. The president did not meet with the family of Jacob Blake, saying the family wanted to involve lawyers. Biden's plans do include a meeting with the family, including the 29 year old man's father. I'm not going to uh, do anything other than meet with uh, an meetings with community leaders as well as business people and other 
folks in law enforcement and to see uh, we talk, start to talk about what has to be done. Not, I'm not going to tell Kenosha what they have to do, but we have to do together. Meanwhile, Attorney General William Barr defending the actions of police, saying shootings of African Americans often aren't racially motivated and not as common as protests make them seem. I don't think they're two justice systems. Let's, you know, I, I think the narrative that uh, there's a, that the police are on some, uh, you know, epidemic of shooting unarmed black men is simply a false narrative, uh, and also the narrative that that's based on race. As for the shooting of Jacob Blake, Barr asked for the public to be patient and allow for due process to take place. I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. Coming up, looking for one more late summer hike, we take a walk in Little River State Park at this place in history. Local news that matters on Local 22 News. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our final morning call. Summer may be coming to a close, but there's still time to make memories in a cabin loaded with connected tech and in-drive entertainment. Enjoy non-stop routes to summer in a new Nissan. And don't miss the last of the 2020 models at the Nissan Bottom Line Sales Event. Get a low 189 per month lease on Nissan Rogue or lease Rogue Sport, just 159 per month. When you purchase a home at Beans, you get endless customer service. I just love the people. It's the biggest investment that anybody is going to make in their life. We treat it that way. It is a very big deal for everybody. To work with the customers and work with my guys out in the field is what I enjoy the most. That's where I started, was outside under the homes, and that's where I like to be. your forecast first on Local 22 WVNY, your local home for ABC. When I think about my dad, I am amazed at what he started. He wanted to leave the world a more beautiful place. Today's challenges have deepened our commitment to this effort. We seek to inspire through the beauty and artistry of exquisite jewelry. This art form marks and celebrates human connectedness, and we are filled with gratitude for the opportunity to foster this tradition. Come visit us in Burlington, Stowe, Hanover, and Stratton, or online at vonbargains.com. Your voice, your vote. In our democracy, they matter. Make yours count. Get registered, learn the issues, and vote by or on November 3rd. Visit vote411.org. This message is furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. How much child support does he pay? He's actually over $3,000 in arrears because he's not paying. He works for the city of New York. You know how fast they're going to garnish his wages? Next Judge Judy. Only on Local 22, today at 5. Local news that matters on Local 22 News. Well, after being cooped up in their homes all summer, some Americans are getting ready to hit the road for Labor Day. Weekend Geo Benintez has the details in today's GMA's First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, masks and travel. How important is it for you to wear a mask at an airport? Oh, I think it's very important. But Dr. Henry Wu with Emory University's Travel Well Center says people need to be extra vigilant when hitting the skies. People may be coming from areas with high rates of COVID. To find out if passengers are wearing face coverings at airports while traveling, we did an experiment. GMA producers visiting the ticketing areas at three popular airports, Miami International Airport, New York's LaGuardia, and Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson. In one hour, in a single spot, we counted to see how many people were wearing masks correctly, incorrectly, or not at all. We found some interesting numbers. So what did we find? Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have our eye-opening results and tell you how to prepare before your next flight. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Feeling stressed? Try New Nature's Bounty Stress Comfort. Three unique gummies for your unique needs. Find peace, boost mood, sleep well. Stress comfort comes naturally, only from Nature's Bounty. As we move forward, let's continue to practice these healthy habits brought to you by Lysol. Wash your hands often with soap and water and monitor your health. 
always use the inside of your elbow to cough or sneeze. Be sure to cover your mouth and nose with a cloth face cover around others and keep about six feet distance from them. And remember to clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces daily. The best way forward is together. Lysol, what it takes to protect. Cookies and briars. That's like getting two desserts. Wait, do we have to thank our moms twice? I don't know. <laughs> Briars combines 100% grade A milk and cream with real Oreo cookies. Better starts with Briars. The Toyota annual clearance is now in its Labor Day final countdown. Get a Tacoma no cost maintenance lease for only $1.99 a month that includes Toyota Safety Sense. This clearance ends September 8th. Toyota, let's go places. If you're trying to choose between crispy or sizzling, remember the or is optional. Now at McDonald's, six-piece chicken McNuggets and a double cheeseburger are just two bucks each. Add any size soft drink, like an ice-cold Dr. Pepper, for a dollar more. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Get ready for some worry-free walking and wagging. Homeward Bound's annual Wolfstock Walk for the Animals is here, and you can participate in more ways than one. You can walk with us around the shelter or do it virtually by taking selfies wherever you walk. The top fundraisers will receive prizes and all participants get a special doggy bag. Stop by the shelter Saturday, September 12th, anytime between 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. or send us your own adventure. For more information, visit homewardboundanimals.org. Now, your Sky Tracker forecast with meteorologist Haley Boulay. Good morning, everybody. It is 624 and sometimes you have to look away from the sunrise to see the beautiful colors that we have. Cotton candy skies as you look over the Adirondacks, the moon there nearly full. Beautiful start to our day and a beautiful day ahead. Now temperatures are mild in the 50s and 60s this morning. 58 in Plattsburgh, 54 in Saranac Lake, 61 in Burlington and 57 for Montpelier. Dew points back into the 50s, but drier air is starting to filter in. There was a whole lot more 60s on the board just a couple of hours ago. Now fog is a bit of an issue, especially in the Northeast Kingdom and along eastern Vermont, the Connecticut River Valley. Keep that in mind. Could be some changing visibilities as you're heading out the door today though once the fog clears out we're mostly sunny a few more clouds though building in as a little disturbance off the coast kind of sneaks some cloud cover in for us thinking most of us are staying dry all of us will stay dry that system well off the coast but dealing with a little bit more cloud cover filtering out the sun for the afternoon temps in the low 80s and we are going to see those temperatures fall back into the mid 70s for friday low 70s saturday full sunshine through the week and and got a little bit more cloud cover and some unsettled weather for Monday. Here's TPIH. At this place in history, we're in Waterbury at Little River State Park with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. Steve, I know where we are. I've done this history hike before. I love it. Well, you know, we're going to try to get everybody outside and enjoying Vermont as we roll into the fall here. And we're going to explore this history hike. So we're going to look at kind of an abandoned hill farms in Vermont. This is indicative of what you're going to find throughout the Green Mountains. Um, but this is all preserved as a nice hike. It's easily accessible. And so I think it's going to be something that we can show our viewers and they're going to love to go do themselves. So do you want to go take a little bit of a hike? Let's do it. Perfect. So we've stopped at the edge of what was the Ricker farm or the Ricker property. What can you tell us about this spot? Well, I'm going to read to you about okay. it here because I have my <laughs> handy dandy guide to the history hike. And it says the Gideon Ricker farm was 250 acres. The original house was built in the 1830s. He purchased the land in 1839 for $1,500. He added a two family house and the main barn, the ridge pole was a single 84 foot spruce log that was cut right here on Ricker Mountain. And then the cow barn was 120 feet long. So if you can imagine that wow. within this landscape. Even without the trees, this area is very rugged. I can't imagine farming here. What were some of the challenges? Gosh, I can't imagine farming <laughs> here either. I mean, I think we can imagine the, the, the challenges. So you're on a mountain in Vermont, so your growing season is really short the side of the hill doesn't have much soil depth so when you're thinking about farming and kind of pulling those nutrients out of the soil on a regular basis especially in the 19th century this didn't work and then anytime there was a big flood it would just wash that topsoil away so though there were a lot of farms and a lot of people living in this area relatively speaking um, 
it was tough. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to use the word vibrant. It was not a vibrant community. Um, it was t a tough life. So they did everything from, you know, they had cows, they had dairies, they had maple sugar, they did a lot of logging, um, but it really was subsistence farming. And is that why we don't see farms here today? It is. I think a lot of people who come visit Little River, they know about the reservoir and think, oh, they just flooded out all the farms. So yes, there are farms underneath the reservoir, mm -hmm. but they were long gone. By the time World War I rolled around, so we're talking about like 1917, 1918, most of this area was abandoned. I think the last person left in the, in the early 1920s, and it started to get bought up by the power companies, the, what later became Green Mountain Power, thinking that they would build a dam for hydroelectric, so they wanted all of the watershed. So really, by the time the reservoir was built, there were no farms here. Everyone had just left, and all that's left are cellar holes. Yeah, so we want to talk more about what evidence people can see if they come here. Obviously, cellar holes, we've got stone walls everywhere. What else? There's a lot of like equipment buried in the woods here, too, and even cemeteries. There are three cemeteries just on this hike alone, and they're very readable. So you can see there's one right beyond the Ricker house, and you can see who was buried there and, and when. And then the roads themselves. A lot of these hiking trails are roads. You can see the stone walls running up and down either side. So for me, I love it. It's a great place to come, and you just kind of imagine no trees, farms, and people living off of this land. And, and now, you know, it's a wilderness. At this place in history, Locating your parked car with the touch of a button might seem excessive. Unless getting lost is the whole point. Click, call, or come by your Volkswagen dealer today and get 0% APR financing for 60 months on the Atlas Crossboard. Right now, AARP's work is more important than ever. Access to health care, affordable prescription drugs, opportunities to save for the future. That's what AARP fights for because that's what everyone deserves. Want a more detailed weather report? Head to MyChamplainValley.com slash weather for everything you need to know. There you'll find in-depth analysis, regional forecasts, active weather radar, and more. Trust the SkyTracker weather team only on MyChamplainValley.com slash weather. Your forecast first on Local 22 News. Good morning, everybody. 630 and we're waking up to a little bit of fog filling in the river valleys. Clear skies overhead, but we'll clear out that fog first. Current temps 57 degrees. That dew point right nearby at 57. It's 57 for Plattsburgh, 61 in Burlington, 54 in Saranac Lake, and 61 as you head out the door in Rutland. Temps today are climbing into the upper 70s to low 80s. Another warm one before we see a bit of a cool down for that Labor Day weekend forecast. Tracking it out coming up in just a few minutes. Coming up, Burlington's mayor says he's open to discussing future changes to officer discipline. This after Black Lives Matter protests continue to call for action. Then fatal crashes in Vermont are at a five year high and one driving expert thinks they could be avoided. And one disabled athlete in our area has some high aspirations. We have her story and her goals for the future as a runner and an activist. This is Local 22 News This Morning. Good morning and happy Thursday to you. Thanks for joining us here on Local 22 News This Morning. I'm Abby Fridman. And I'm Libby Faro. As protests continue in the Queen City over the Black Lives Matter movement and the shooting of Jacob Blake in Wisconsin, protesters are demanding the firing of three Burlington officers who have been involved in use of force incidents. Those officers are Corey Campbell, Jason Bellavance, and Joseph Coro. Wednesday, an attorney representing the Burlington Police Officers Association, Richard Cassidy, addressed those demands, saying the conduct was reviewed by the city which found no significant wrongdoing. Cassidy said that because each officer was disciplined, those cases are closed. Terminating their employment now would violate the collective bargaining agreement. Mayor Murrow Weinberger said he's discussed these demands with the protesters. Uh, varying degrees of discipline were, were handed out in the, uh, with, the, with the different incidents. And that's the process we have. That is the lawful orderly process we have. And uh, the city attorney has released memos and we have shared this information with the protesters about um, uh, about really 
uh, the, the limitations within the law of, of reopening and revisiting that. Weinberger did say he's open to discussing future changes to officer discipline, adding he believes it's problematic that only the police chief has a formal role in disciplining officers. Vermont State Police say more people are losing their lives in car crashes, and in many cases it's preventable. Ahead of the holiday weekend, they're pleading for people to drive sober, buckle up, and follow the speed limit. Local 22's Courtney Kramer breaks down the numbers. There have been 43 fatalities on Vermont roadways so far in 2020. That number is double what it was last year and the highest number of deaths the state has seen in the past five years. Actually, July was the worst month we've had since at least 2008, like the worst single month with 15 fatalities. Vermont State Police and surrounding law enforcement are reminding drivers that while Labor Day basically closes the book on summer, it's also one of the deadliest times on the road. So far, the data this year has already been quite concerning, despite more people staying at home. The months of uh, really March and April, there was very little traffic, but you know, when you drive around, people seem to be speeding more. They seem to be look, you know, looking at their phones more. They did not see law enforcement out as much as they used to. I think some people, uh, unfortunately, got the message that they could do things that they shouldn't be doing. Officials say nearly a third of deaths this year on the road were caused by impaired driving. It doesn't happen by accident. Right? DUI is no accident. This is something that people uh, take an uh, active participation in before they find themselves there. Sergeant Jay Riggin is the impaired driving expert for VSP. He says since marijuana was legalized in the state, drug-related DUIs have spiked. And since 2014, DUI drug fatalities have outpaced deaths caused by drunk driving. This is the issue, right, is that people are perceiving one to be somehow more safe than the other. I'm telling you that they are not. This is not about do less drugs. This is not about whether things should be legal or illegal. It is do not combine the use with driving. And we see it as just that simple. You can expect to see an increased police presence on the roads this Labor Day weekend as part of the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign. And with the end of summer, of course, comes the start of school. Police want drivers to be conscious and respectful of school buses transporting students. Reporting tonight in Williston, Courtney Kramer, Local 22 News.